Hello everyone, welcome. I'm Dr. Shreful Halim and today I'm going to talk about antiretroviral therapy. So here, this is the first picture of my presentation and here actually you can see uh, this is a CD4 positive T cell. So this is a CD4 positive T cell, this is the cell membrane and here you have one HIV, so human immunodeficiency virus and this HIV actually first get attached with the surface of the CD4 positive T cell and then after fusion it actually inserts its genetic material inside the CD4 positive T cell. This actually then uh, as the CD4 positive T uh, uh, this actually inside the CD4 positive T cell the RNA of the HIV is converted to the DNA by the action of the reverse transcriptase. So here you can see two reverse transcriptase converting it into a DNA and after trans after being converted to DNA this DNA actually get integrated into the whole cell DNA or the CD4 positive T cell DNA by the help of integrase and then the the DNA inside the CD4 positive T cell undergoes transcription and a lot of viral copies viral RNA copies are made and some of the RNA copies are translated and some of the RNA copies are not translated. The ones which are translated, they, uh, they actually produces multiple proteins like, like that of reverse transcriptase, the capsid proteins and a lot of other proteins. And those undergo some processing which is called the proteolytic processing with the help of some enzymes which are called protease. And after this processing, those proteins are ready and you have the RNA and the proteins and the RNA actually get together and form the complete variant after packaging and assembly. Then the HIV actually gets out of the CD4 positive T cell and released actually. So this is the story, life story of the HIV inside the CD4 positive T cell. And, and the most of the drugs which are used for treatment of HIV uh, actually prevents uh, multiple, st di prevents different steps. Suppose there are some drugs which prevent the fusion, some drugs that prevent the reverse transcription, some drugs that prevent the integration of the viral genome into the host cell genome, some drug prevents the protease. So th those are the most common drugs that are used in HIV treatment. We'll, I will go into each drug and actually describe its mechanism again. So the HIV therapy is also known as highly active antiretroviral therapy or HARRT. This is often initiated at the time of HIV diagnosis but the best indication is in a patient with AIDS defining illness or a CD4 positive cell count which is less than normal suppose less than 500 cells per cubic millimeter or if there is a high viral load and the regimen of heart consists of three drugs which actually prevent the resistance and two of them are NRTI or nucleotide reverse transcriptase inhibitors and one of the following which is maybe NNRTI meaning non-nucleotide reverse transcriptase inhibitor or protease inhibitor or integrase inhibitor. So here you have actually I have actually uh, categorized the drugs according to the pathogenesis. So the first step of entry inside the uh, CD4 positive T cell is fusion. So there are some drugs which inhibits this step, the, the very first step of entry and those are called fusion inhibitor. And there are two important drugs, one is Maraviroc and another is Enfuvatide. So Maraviroc and Enfuvatide, those are the two important drugs which prevents the fusion. And the way they do that, Maraviroc binds CCR5 on the surface of T cell and inhibits the interaction of GP120. So here it there is GP120 and here is CCR5. So there is inhibition of this activity. So GP120 cannot actually bind the CCR5 on the surface of the immune cells. And enfuvatides bind GP41. GP41 as you can remember actually helps the entry inside the cell. So it inhibits viral entry. And enfuvatide actually can cause skin reaction at injection sites which is a common side effect of enfuvatide. And the another group, which is the next group, is NRTI or NNRTI. Though both are reverse transcriptin inhibitor, 
some are nucleotide reverse transcriptin inhibitor and some are non nucleotide reverse transcriptin inhibitor so the step they inhibit is conversion of the rna of the hiv to the dna so this step is uh, actually uh, this step is usually done with the help of reverse transcriptase so reverse transcription is done by the help of reverse transcriptase and those drugs inhibits the reverse transcriptase enzyme and the rna cannot be converted to a dna okay so this is the basic mechanism and there are multiple drugs in this group so the nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors are abacavir diranosine intricitabin lamivudin stavudin tenofovir zidovudin formally which is also known as azetothymidine or azt so the main mechanism is that they competitively inhibit the nucleotide binding to reverse the transcript to reverse transcriptase so they inhibit the binding of, of the nucleotides to reverse transcriptase and that's why the time into the dna chain because they lack a 3 prime hydrocell group so the chain cannot be elongated further the further the nrtis so nrtis states at the, as the le, as the last nucleotide so it is the last nucleotide beyond which no new nucleotides can be added and one of the important thing to know about tenofovir tenofovir is itself a nucleotide and other drugs are nucleoside so they are nucleoside and they need to be phosphorylated to be active and zidovudine is a very important drug which can be used for prophylaxis and during pregnancy uh, which actually helps the decrease of fetal transmission of the hiv infected mother and the mnemonic by which you can remember that have you dine or woodine with my nuclear family so dine for woodine so you can see there are a lot of woodine drugs lamivudine stavudine and then zidovudine so woodine drugs with my nuclear family are nucleosides uh, so those are nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors and the toxicities that are associated with nucleotide reverse transcriptase inhibitors are one is bone marrow suppression and you can actually reverse it by using GSF or granulocyte coronary stability factor and erythropoietin. So GSF improves your neutrophil count and erythropoietin improves your RBC count. It can also cause peripheral neuropathy and nucleosides can cause lactic acidosis and zirubodin specially can cause anemia and didanosine can cause pancreatitis. Important to remember every especially the bone marrow toxicity. So non-nucleoside reverse transcript inhibitors are few, which is delavadin, efavirenz, nevirapine. The mechanism is uh, a bit different from the NRTIs. They do not require phosphorylation to be active. So it, it binds actually to the reverse transcriptase, but at a different site. And it doesn't need any phosphorylation. So they don't need to be competing, competing with nucleotides. And the toxicities associated with NNRTIs are rash and hepatotoxicity, which is common in all NNRTIs. And ifavirenz can be associated with vivid dreams and CNS symptoms. And in case of pregnancy, you shouldn't use delavadin and ifavirenz. So you can only use nevirapine. So nevirapine for pregnant women. And another next group is integrase inhibitor. So you now you have the already reverse transcribed RNA into DNA. So RNA is reverse transcribed into DNA and the enzyme that helps the DNA of the HIV to integrate into the DNA of the host genome is called integrase. So the integrase inhibitors are also important group of drugs and one of the important drug is raltegravir. So raltegravir inhibits HIV genome integration into host cell chromosome or host cell genome by reversibly inhibiting HIV integrase and the most important toxicity associated with raltegravir is increased creatinine kinase or creatine kinase. Protease inhibitor are one very important group of antiretroviral drugs and as I have already mentioned after transcription the new HIV RNAs can go translation or can remain unchanged. If they undergo translation they form a lot of proteins which need some processing and this processing requires some enzyme called protease and if this processing is inhibited the viral genome and the proteins cannot assemble and cannot form a complete virion so it will inhibit the release 
inhibit the packaging and assembly of the progeny variants and that's why these are very important drugs and the most common drugs in protease inhibitor group are atazanavir, darunavir, fosamprenavir, indinavir, lopinavir, ritonavir and saquinavir so a lot of navirs and the mechanism is actually the assembly of virion is dependent on HIV-1 protease which cleaves the polypeptide products and this HIV-1 protease is inhibited by protease inhibitors and protease inhibitors actually by this mechanism prevents the maturation of new viruses and one important drug is ritonavir which has added efficacy which can boost other drug concentration by inhibiting cytochrome P450 and all protease inhibitors end in navir very important to remember so there is a mnemonic all of those are brought from fast aid which is navir or never tease a protease never tease a protease the toxicities associated with protease inhibitors are hyperglycemia GI intolerance like nausea diarrhea and lipodystrophy indenavir can be associated with nephropathy or hematuria and rifampin uh, is an important drug uh, which is an important cyclo uh, that will be 450 and iridine glucuronyl transferase inducer it is contraindicated with protease inhibitors because it will actually lower the protease inhibitor concentration and there will be therapeutic failure so you shouldn't use rifampin in a patient with uh, on, on therapy with protease inhibitors so this is the end of my discussion and thanks for watching my video and more videos on the way Okay, bye-bye.